Welcome to r slash pro revenge, where a greedy boss tries to pay nothing, but pays double instead. Our next Reddit post is from Satisfaction Tall. My first job out of college was for a local TV station. The owner was, and still is, the worst human being I've ever met. This guy has money, but he'll cheat and lie, anything to get out of paying his bills. When I started working there, the owner had just signed a contract with DirecTV to become part of their broadcast package. Since they were at the time purely a local TV station, this meant that we had about two months to upgrade our system so that we could start broadcasting to DirecTV customers in the entire Bay Area. Every day that we failed to do this past the deadline means the owner would suffer a penalty, as per the contract. Not knowing about how any of this works, the owner hired a friend of mine to come in as a freelance consultant. My friend told him that for about $15,000, he could get a system that would automate the entire process, which, of course, this guy didn't want to pay for. He told my friend to find a cheaper way to do it, costing about half as much, and to pay for all the hardware up front and he would reimburse him later. Knowing what a piece of garbage my boss was, I warned my friend not to front the money because he would not get paid back. My friend just smiled and said, watch me. So he made the system work. We went live on schedule and the owner was happy. Then my friend presented the guy with the bill. Immediately, the usual excuses start. Oh, I'm a little short on money this month. Can I pay you later? Then my friend pulled out the trump card. Not only did my friend threaten to take all the equipment back and take the station off the air, he revealed that in order to get the uplink working for cheap, someone had to come in every day and code the broadcast manually. It's not a terribly complicated procedure. It takes like five minutes. But of course, no one else at the station knows how to do this but him. So either the owner can pay what he's owed, plus a $2,000 a month consulting fee, or the station goes dark and he starts paying the penalty to DirecTV. That douchebag paid. Fast. So instead of the guy paying $15,000, he ended up shelling out more than double that amount because my friend lapped up his $2,000 a month fee for close to a year before he felt bad enough and finally taught someone there how to do it themselves. Moral of the story, only thinking about short-term game will always cost you more in the long run. Our next Reddit post is from Six Overmore. At the restaurant I used to work at, there was a chef who made the best gumbo I've ever had. However, the management was awful. The only employees who stayed for very long were the ones who paid well, such as Mr. Gumbo. Customers knew him by name. Then, one day, he called in sick, which he had never done before, and management didn't let him call out. He had enough and quit, but he also burned a few bridges. He took all of his notes with him, which had ratios, spices, times, and temperatures. Everything. We had no idea how to make his gumbo. They then tasked me with recreating it. Well, my gumbo was nowhere near as good as his gumbo, so most of the gumbo customers, which was a lot of them, left. I quit shortly after. From what I heard from my friends who still worked there, the business almost went under. This was Mr. Gumbo's way of making the management pay. Our next Reddit post is from Scooter McGee. I worked for a large private training company that also owned three other smaller sister companies. As a training consultant, I looked after our largest client. Because the client that I worked with served alcohol, all the staff working for them needed to have their certificate to be able to serve alcohol in the restaurant. While our company itself wasn't accredited to be able to provide this qualification, one of our sister companies was. I had 22 students who needed to either complete or update their qualification, and since mine was due to expire soon, my manager wanted me to attend the session also. But it was a free qualification, I would get to do it alongside my students, and my manager said that I could have the Monday off to make up for my time. I was more than happy to attend. As a trainer, it's our job to inspect any site that we'll be holding a training session in at least one day prior to ensure that the venue is appropriate and adheres to safety standards. If we deem it unsafe, we have to report it and we can't hold a session unless the safety concerns can be rectified or if we can get approval for a different venue. This is not only legally part of our job, but it's written into our contracts. 
All 23 of us turn up to the store at 8.45 a.m. as the session was due to start at 9. The trainer comes downstairs and I introduce myself. He then starts ranting about how the room upstairs isn't safe to hold the session in. I asked, why didn't you come and do a safety check of the venue prior to today like you're supposed to? He said that he didn't have time and now he's annoyed because he has to cancel the session. I explained that this is extremely unacceptable and that I'm not happy with him at all because he knows that he's supposed to do the check before the day of the session. And that not only have I traveled two hours on my day off for this, but I had 22 students with me who all had to change their schedules to accommodate this session. I explained to him why this was extremely unprofessional on his part, and he scoffed at me, telling me off because he's been doing this job longer than I've been alive and I know nothing. I decided to do a check of the room before calling my manager to explain all of this to her. Meanwhile, the restaurant manager was giving the trainer a piece of his mind. After completing my safety check, I also deemed the room to be unsafe to hold a session. I then went to call my manager to explain the situation when the dickhead trainer came running in saying that he had found another room available at a hotel down the road. He told us where to go and to give him 15 minutes to set up the room. By now, it was 9.30am, so I knew that we would be running one hour behind. He left to go and set up the room, and I called my boss to explain it all. My boss was fuming, especially because dickhead trainer hadn't bothered to contact her about any of these issues, or to get authorization to book another room, but she told me to call her after the session because after all the fuss, she wasn't going to pull the pin on the client and ruin the day more. The session started at 10.15am, and it was horrible! The dickhead manager was so out of touch that I couldn't believe he had been doing this job for so long. He took so long to talk about anything, refused to take questions, tried to relate personal stories to the content that made no sense, and on three separate occasions, he told the room that he was smarter than we'll ever be and that we might think that we know more than him, but we don't. He told a 30-minute story about a car accident that his daughter had two years ago and rambled for so long that by lunch break at 12.30, we had gotten through four pages of content out of 230. 30. My students were freaking out about the timing and were clearly frustrated by the dickhead manager. I was so frustrated and embarrassed that this guy was representing my company. I went back to the room early to ask dickhead manager to move along with the content faster so that we could take the test on time. He told me the test would take an hour, so I told him that it would need to be taken no later than 3pm, and then he would need to keep his content relevant to the test so that we could all get out on time. He agreed. Well, by 2.45pm, I was more pissed than ever. I demanded that he let us have 15 minutes of reading time before we started the test because we were only up to page 34 in the book and we didn't have time to listen to his stories. He argued with me, telling me that he would fail me if I kept speaking back to him. I tried explaining respectfully over and over what the issues were, but he wouldn't hear any of it. He told me that he would fail me no matter what my score on the test was because of my attitude. I walked out, and my students sat in silence. I called my boss, explained everything to her, and she told me to put him on the phone immediately. He came back in five minutes later and told us it was time to take the test. I don't know what was said on the phone. Everyone was done within 40 minutes. When it was time to hand in the test, all the students started panicking that they wouldn't pass because dickhead trainer was a jerk. He wanted them to hand in their test while he graded in front of them. This wasn't allowed. I knew that dickhead trainer had violated a lot of policies, but one thing stuck out in my mind. He never got approval to buy the hotel room. I thought to myself, I might not be able to fire him or reprimand him personally, but I can sure make sure that he pays. Literally. I got in my car and called my boss. I explained everything to her, and she requested that I send her a detailed email when I got home. I did so. 
I came in on Monday and had a meeting with my training manager, state manager, and the GM of our company. I was praised for how I handled the situation, how I supported my students and followed policy, and I was given a bonus. As for dickhead trainer, well, not only was he reamed for his behaviors, his unprofessionalism, and for not following policy in regards to room checking, but he also forgot one little thing when booking that hotel room for the session. Basically, if a consultant books a room more expensive than $300 for training purposes and he doesn't get approval, then he will not be reimbursed for the room. Well, unluckily for dickhead manager, that room cost 550 bucks. So that's 550 bucks out of his pocket that he would not be reimbursed for. Our client also requested that dickhead trainer never be involved with their business again. Because dickhead manager made so many mistakes, he was also let go from the company. So after a terrible day, dickhead trainer not only lost a job, but was also 550 bucks out of pocket. Goes to show that just because you've been doing a job longer than someone else doesn't mean you're doing it right. OP, it sucks that you had to come back in on a Monday when it was supposed to be your day off, but hey, if it got this guy fired, I think it's well worth it. Our next Reddit post is from the Foot 58 About 20 years ago, I worked in the technology field as a sales engineer, supporting sales reps. A new sales rep manager joined the team, and they didn't like the control that sales engineers had over the sales process. Because I was the lead sales engineer, he decided to make me an example of his brilliance. He got a very large lead with a bank and closed a very large deal without involving any sales engineers at all. Just after the deal closed, he called me to gloat, saying something to the effect of, The biggest deal this month. Oh wait, you didn't participate at all. About a month or so later, I got a call from that manager in a bit of a panic and I partake in a conference call with the customer. It was decided that I had to come to the company for a meeting. At the meeting, I figure out that the sales manager and the sales rep totally screwed things up, and they sold the customer an incompatible set of solutions. In the meeting, I casually mentioned that maybe the customer could return one half of the stuff and replace it with another because they were roughly the same price. After the meeting, the sales manager starts complaining to me for mentioning price because price was the exclusive domain of the sales rep. He calls my manager who trashes all over me. I didn't like my manager at all, so when he took the sales rep side, I said F you and quit. I sent a very lengthy defense of my actions during the meeting to HR. Four months later, I get a call from another sales rep still at the company. He asks, hey, what happened at such and such bank? They're suing us. I call the bank and I get the email for the chief information officer and send them a letter explaining that I was a sales engineer for the company that you're suing, so call me please. They eventually sent a lawyer to interview me and get my side of events. My testimony was devastating to my former company's defense. I showed the bank the letter that I sent to HR in which I claimed that our company lied to the bank just to get a sale. Eventually, I get a subpoena to be deposed in the bank versus company lawsuit by my former company's lawyers. By that time, I was working elsewhere, hanging out on Yahoo stock message boards and bashing the company's stock. One day, another sales rep from a distant territory that I still talked to called me to say that a huge deal that we had worked on for over a year had just fallen through in dramatic fashion. I posted that information to the Yahoo message board devoted to that stock. The stock crashed $13 the next day. I wonder if my post had anything to do with that. About six weeks after the stock crash, it's the day before that I'm supposed to get deposed in the bank versus company matter. I get served with a lawsuit by the company because they had used slap laws to get my identity from Yahoo and sue me for the post that crashed their stock. So I went to the deposition the next day and said, I'm sorry, the company you represent today just served me with a lawsuit last night, so this deposition is over. They were dumbfounded. Turns out there were two separate legal teams, one working on defending the company against the bank's lawsuit and one finding that pesky internet troll that crashed their stock and the two never noticed the same person was central to each. The company settled with the bank and dropped their suit against me soon after. And that long letter that I sent to HR, it turns out that the managers above me just didn't read it. 
Once the lawsuit was over, the sales rep, sales manager, and his manager were all fired. Our next Reddit post is from Sir Dranks a lot. This happened around Thanksgiving 2015. My family gets together at a rural-ish cabin. I had agreed to give my younger sister a ride to the airport on Sunday since she was having a short break from college, and she had important classes and tests to get back to after Thanksgiving. I'd also agreed to lock up my cabin for my parents since they had to leave on Saturday to get back to pressing work matters. During our post-Thanksgiving dinner conversations, my sister decided to give me flack about a bad couple of months that I'd had. I had broken up with a long-term girlfriend of mine, and the company that I worked for folded. This went beyond normal sibling rivalry, including her saying something to the effect of, Who would date or hire a worthless failure loser like you anyway, B-word? Your girlfriend was probably passionately hugging your boss and dumped you both when she realized that you were both failures. She was called out on her crude remarks by several family members, but refused to apologize. I seemingly let it slide. I had plenty of emergency funds, had a few job prospects lined up, and was actually hired shortly after with a nice salary bump. And I was okay with being single. My sister's vehemence was out of left field though and uncalled for. Sunday morning, I waited for her in the kitchen with a bottle of Jack Daniels. Hey Heather, I said when she entered the kitchen. Want to apologize for your awful comments the other night? She laughed. About you being a dickless failure? Nope. Now let's get going, I have a flight to catch. Fair enough, I responded, and poured myself a double, then knocked it back. What the F are you doing? She screamed, I have a plane to catch. You sure do, I responded cheerfully. I paused, then repeated the pour and slam. Well, shoot, it looks like I've had too much to drink and drive. I guess we'll have to wait until you're effing civil, won't we? She pulled out her phone and screwed with it for a few seconds before I said, There aren't any cab companies or Ubers around here. I'm your only ride, so you can apologize for being a B-word or you can miss your flight. F you! I grinned and took another shot. In short, I got absolutely trashed. She missed her flight, missed some tests, and her GPA plummeted. It was effing hilarious. That was r slash pro revenge, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.